Hi, this is Representative Jim Durkin. And State Senator John Curran. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we have not been able, to, we will not be able to do our, uh, our kids' fair this year. We know that the Reptile Show is something that's really exciting and very important for the kids, but also the ambassador program for the Brookfield Zoo. So this next segment will be an extension of that program, and we're going to go out to the Brookfield Zoo to see what they have to offer. So come on along with us. Hey everyone, this is Jim, and we are at the Brookfield Zoo. It's the world-renowned Brookfield Zoo, and uh, they're open, and uh, we're fortunate today to bring the zoo to you. And uh, I'm fortunate also to have the ambassadors from the zoo that we're going to talk to and visit, and uh, we're going to talk to the staff, and we're going to find out a little bit about them. These ambassadors are not the type you see at the United Nations. These are the ones that we'll see in the zoo when you come here on a regular basis, I hope. But we are going to start right now, and we're going to talk to Maggie. And Maggie, who do we got? Hi. Hi. This is Quilbert. He is a prehensile-tailed porcupine. These porcupines are native to South America. They are really interesting because they have a long prehensile tail. So a prehensile kind of is a really big word, <laughs> meaning um, grasping. So right now he's resting his tail on my shoulder, but that tail can actually wrap around branches and that helps um, support him up in the treetops. Does he need hand sanitizer after he eats his, uh, his carrot? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he does not. So right now he is munching on a peanut and peanuts are one of his favorite treats that he gets here at the zoo. Now, um, porcupines are a type of rodent, so similar to beavers and rats. So they have those really strong, sharp teeth. Now, if you get close up, you can see the coloration of his teeth. He has bright orange teeth, and that is due to the fact that they have really um, iron in their teeth, and that makes them extra strong. So they can chew through things like logs and branches they like to eat bark and leaves out in the wild yeah some of his teeth look similar to some of my colleagues in springfield during the month of may so this is a, <laughs> yeah uh, where is he from where, where is this uh they're native to south from? america okay. and brazil um, they spend a lot of their time living up in the trees where they're going to find a lot of their food which consists of leaves they chew on bark nuts here at the zoo, he gets a really big salad every day. Right now, he's munching on a uh, special biscuit made for leaf-eating animals. But big then salad, you hear that, guys? Lunch, big salad, egg? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> and then big fruits and vegetables okay. and lettuce. Now, most notably, about on all over his body are quills, which all porcupines have. He, uh, his defense system, correct. Right, exactly. Yeah. So those provide him with his defense. Now his quills are special because they have barbs on them. Mm. So they will embed themselves into a predator's skin if he were to need to protect himself in that way. How old is he? He, made he is two years two old. Two years old. How did you get, how did he make his way here to Brookfield? Well, he was born right here Where at the really? zoo on World Porcupine Day. So he was born over at the play zoo and his mom, Lucia, was a first time mom. So she wasn't quite sure what to do. So we stepped in and we hand raised him. So we took okay. him home, provided him with care and that's how he became one of our animal ambassadors. That's why he's so comfortable sitting on my hand. Is his mother still here at the zoo? She is, she's oh, also one of our animal ambassadors. Okay, well I hope they had a beautiful Mother's Day. Yeah, we did celebrate Mother's Day with him and Lucia together. Oh, good. <laughs> um, oh, this is a, he, he's very focused. He is, he yes. loves eating and he loves spending time with us. Oh, that's good. So he's got a really big nose and uh, that helps him find food out in the wild. You can see how large it is and really large whiskers. He's very um, scent oriented. And the whiskers help him with? Finding his way around his environment. In the okay. wild, they are nocturnal. So okay. right now he's awake, spending time with us during the day. So he's a bit on zoo time. Okay. So he hangs out with us because of course we're diurnal, we're awake during the day. Mm -hmm. But in the wild, they are nocturnal. So he's gonna be relying on using his sense of smell and his whiskers to help him um, balance his way around what his environment. What exhibit is he in here at the zoo? Well, he is not in a public exhibit, no, so not? he comes out for um, chats to see the public up okay. close um, whenever we do start chats again, because um, that's part of being an animal ambassador. Okay. Well, he uh, looks like a fine young man. <laughs> it's a man. Maybe. Yes, he is uh, a boy. He's yep. <laughs> got uh, a lot of potential and a great future ahead of him. <laughs> um, he is definitely a guest favorite. People are big fans of Quilbert and he is absolutely a staff favorite. We love him very much. Is he, uh, would you consider him a pretty gentle uh, guy? He is very gentle. He's right. very sweet. Does he share uh, space with anybody or is he in a, a little, his own home? He is solitary. In the solitary. wild, they're solitary. Right. They come together for breeding 
um, but he lives by himself. Well, we've been solitary for the past four months, so this is a good reason for us to come out. <laughs> yes, so they're very good at social distancing. No, it's great. <laughs> All right, well, that's a, he's a neat little guy. Uh, fortunately, he hasn't had to use these things to defend himself. No, he does not, um, has not had to. We've worked very closely with making sure he has a very calm experience when he's out with us. It's very positive. Um, we have a very strong bond with him. So, okay. but he does, he could very well lift them if he were scared. They erect their quills um, okay. to make themselves look bigger. Have you ever he, seen him do that? Yes, if he were to get um, frightened by something, he would put them up. They do not shoot their quills though. Some <laughs> yes. of them do? No, they do not. That's a very okay. common misconception about porcupines is that they shoot their quills, but they just fall out just like our hair. Only in the cartoons. That's Only in the cartoons, right. yep. <laughs> He's a, a fascinating little guy. <laughs> um. So he has quills almost all over his entire body, except on his feet, because he needs to grip with those. On the base of his tail at the tip, he does not have quills, and of course on his nose. But even inside of his ear, he's got quills in there, because that can be a very vulnerable spot yeah. if a predator were to try to get him. So he's got protection right inside of his well, ear. Well, you know what? This guy's got a pretty good deal. He does, he absolutely yeah. does. He's got great health care here at the zoo. He does. He's got wonderful animal care staff taking well, care of him every day. All, for all the animals here. Yeah. <laughs> so he loves his life here and we love him. How much does he weigh? Um, he weighs 4.2 kilograms. 4.2 we'll, kilograms, so right around a little under nine pounds. He will, okay, oh, oh, what is the max? Where do you think, is he still growing or is No, he... he's full grown. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, so what's the, What's the trajectory for him? Is he going to be a father at some point? Is this how we do um, it? He potentially could be, but right now he's just focused on being an animal ambassador here at the zoo, educating people about porcupines and connecting people with wildlife and nature. Okay. Well, he would enjoy himself at a baseball game because, you know, you buy those bags of peanuts. Oh, he would and absolutely he love that. Probably, uh, <laughs> eat all of them as opposed to me losing half of them every time I crack open the shell. One of them falls out and the other one goes in my mouth. So. He's very skilled. Do I get to hold him? No, unfortunately, that's my job here. Okay. <laughs> you can give him a nut, though. Oh, that'd be great. Can you hand that to him? Oh, boy. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Colbert. All right. So, what do we have next on our uh, exciting event? We're going to take out Casper, the ball python. Oh my God. And your name? Jill. And Jill. Yeah. Jill. Thanks. How long have you been here, Jill? Um, I've been full time for about two and a half years now. Okay. Um, but I was an intern and a seasonal keeper before that, too. So. Okay, I forgot to ask uh, your predecessor. Did you study uh, animal science or anything? How did you I get did. It? Yeah, so I um, actually went to the University of Illinois in Champaign and okay. I studied animal science. Great. And originally I was pre vet, um, so I yeah. was thinking about going to vet school. Um, but after I interned here at the zoo, I really fell in love with it and with the animals and the people and being able to reach kind of like out. like being in the legislature. <laughs> yeah. You walk in there every day, you're in a great mood. Yeah. You see a lot of these. <laughs> 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 but uh, these are the good ones. Yeah. So this is Casper, and Casper's a ball python. Let me guess. Why'd you call him Casper? <laughs> because she's all white. Thank you. Um, so Casper's pretty unique. She's actually called leucistic. So that's what you would call this color pattern. Sure. Um, some people might think she's albino just by looking at her, um, but she's actually leucistic. So she was, what leucistic is? yeah, she was actually bred to be all white. She bred here? At the um, no, she was not. Um, so ball pythons are actually very common to have as pets. Um, and so someone was actually um, trying to smuggle her through O'Hare airport um, for the pet trade. Yeah. Um, and she was confiscated and um, brought to us. So because she's bright white, she wouldn't be able to um, have very good camouflage in the wild, yeah. and she wouldn't be able to take care of herself. Um, and that's why we have her as an animal ambassador. Yeah, here's so kind of a bad question. What's the market for a pet <laughs> like this? You know, that's a great question. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but they do come in all different kinds of color patterns. So their normal coloration is um, kind of like a, a brown and a little bit of Is like this a, a more rare type of... Uh... It is, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, to have the all white. Um, how old is, can you get a guess of how old this? Uh... We don't know for sure. She's about full grown, so she could be up to a few years old or older than that. Uh, we just don't really know because she was just kind of given to us. <laughs> where do you think, uh, where's her species from? They're from Africa. Africa? Wow. Yeah. 
Um, so they would typically live in uh, forested areas, which would explain like the color pattern that they would normally have. How big will this? She's full grown. She's full grown? Yeah, so she's probably, I would say maybe like three and a half feet long. Okay. Um, but you could tell she's really curious. She's really used to being handled and um, she comes out for chats a lot around the zoo, especially during the summertime. Okay. Um, so you can even pet her if you want. You can pet her right along this way. Does she have fangs? Um, she does, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we always say anything with a mouth could bite, like you could if you wanted to. Um, but she is really friendly and used to being handled. So um, and what she no eat? Worries. Mice and rats. In the wild, they could eat um, other, other kinds of small mammals or some snakes will eat birds or eggs. Um, but, what do you guys feed her? Um, so she gets fed every other week and she gets small mice, which are about this big, and then um, small rats, which are a little bit bigger. Uh, I assume that the mice and the rats have already been... Yeah, so we get yeah. them frozen so and then we saw for them. Yeah. Chasing them really, really it's a little cruel. safer to feed them that way instead yeah. of feeding live. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, so she... Well, that's a beautiful animal. Yeah, so she can eat something that's about the thickest part of her, as thick as the um, thickest part of her body. So it'll take about a week for her to completely... Roughly, yeah. They do have a really slow uh, metabolism, so sure. it takes a while. But their mouth must just go... Yeah, yeah. So she can stretch her mouth in a special way to be able to accommodate the food that she eats. Okay. Um, so she kind of will just, will just swallow it whole and then it will take a while to digest. So they eat all the bones and all the fur um, and then just process that. That's so you it. can see her sticking out her tongue. Yes. So she's smelling her environment around her using her tongue. Okay. So they have a special organ on the roof of her mouth. And when she sticks her tongue out, the scent particles from the air will land on her tongue and bring them back and send signals to her brain to kind of tell her what she's smelling. Wow. So that's why her tongue is forked. So that helps sure. her to distinguish between okay. her left and her right side. How many times a day do you think that tongue is out? Oh gosh, I don't know. I mean, just watching her now, it's going on so fast. But yeah, and then um, pythons are also special. So if you come in a little bit closer, you can see she's got these little like, holes almost on her mouth. I do, yeah. Um, so because she's white, it's really easy to see. But those are called heat pits. And those help her to um, sense the temperature of her environment too. So she can um, sense very minute changes in temperature between, um, you know, between you and me and anything around us to help her find her prey. How long do those, uh, these uh, boas, uh, or python, what do you call them, python? Python, Pythons, yeah. how long, what, what's their lifespan? Um, so in the wild, she could probably live like five or 10 years. Um, so she has to worry about predators and about finding Not food. here. Yeah, but here she could probably live to be like 25. Well, that's good. Yeah, so. Yeah. Beautiful, like good stuff. beautiful yeah. animal. And so as a reptile, she is cold-blooded. Um, so that means that her temperature is going to depend on her environment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on nice hot days, we like to take our snakes outside so they can get some sun and move around. Um, and on the colder days, you know, they tend to uh, kind of curl up under a rock or under a log to conserve yeah. their energy. Um, and then she is covered in scales too, so they help to protect her. They help to keep moisture inside of her body too. So when they're right. living in warmer areas, that helps to keep the moisture inside of their bodies. Um, and reptiles lay eggs as well. So those are some sure. of the ways that they are different from mammals like us. Well, <laughs> she actually even has a clear scale that covers her eyes to protect them. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, what a machine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so she'll shed their, they'll shed their scales. Um, and snakes will typically shed in one long piece. And um, How often? Younger snakes will shed more often, so a growing snake might shed every month or so. But since she's full grown, she probably sheds like every other month or so. Have you, obviously you've seen this. Yes, yeah. That's gonna be fascinating. Oh, it's process. really cool, yeah. yeah. Especially because they do shed the eye caps, so the scales over their eyes, so you, um, mm. you could see those too. So yeah, she's not venomous. Um, but she's a constrictor, so she'll squeeze her food before she eats it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. Can anybody else can they? Sure, sure. yeah. Sure. This is my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to just cut her going towards her tail, so just like that. Perfect. David? Yeah. So a lot of the times we have people who are scared of snakes, but I always tell them it kind of feels like a basketball. It's kind of bumpy um, and really dry. So they're not slimy because like I mentioned before, they like to keep the, the scales will keep the moisture inside of their bodies. That skin is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. All right, who do we got next? Save the best for last. <laughs> I might be biased. I'm Francine. Francine. Now, Francine, how long have you been with the zoo? I have been here full-time since 2007. 
Okay. So 13 years. And did you study the world of zoos and animals? I studied zoology, got my bachelor's. I didn't do it. I really didn't do it. Did I did. <laughs> <laughs> went. Wow. So this animal. is Dakota. She is a red-tailed hawk. So you can tell their reddish-brown tail there. That's their distinctive feature. And they have one band going across it. Yeah. They are native to this area. So a lot of times when you're driving down the highway, you see them sitting up on the poles. Yes. Because they're looking for yummy things to eat on the ground. Okay. So they eat lots of different things. They might eat mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, possibly a rabbit. How about little poodles? Poodle would be a little big for her. All right, that's good. But... I feel better right now. <laughs> yeah. But they do have pretty strong talons here. Right. So that's why I have to so wear this the, glove. How, what's the most weight they could, you think that they could, they could scoop up? A rabbit is the biggest that they can okay. scoop up, yeah. And she, since she's a female, she's actually larger than the males. Okay. The males are a third smaller. So she can pick up something, okay. um, yeah, a rabbit. Well, Francine has a little bit of vision problem. I, but... yeah, that's why I wear glasses. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. All right, oops, cut that part. I'm just kidding. Francine, no. No. <laughs> no. no, Dakota. Dakota. <laughs> Dakota does. <laughs> I did that, yeah, okay. Dakota does have a, a little bit of a vision problem because somebody shot her. Oh, so wow. she had a detached retina in her right eye. Was it a BB or can you, was it an actual bullet? Can, um, you, can you tell from the uh, I'm not injury? sure, but uh, she did have a pellet that, you know, went by her eye and one by her oh, hip. So she, since she had that detached retina, she does not see very well out of that eye. Okay. Luckily, somebody found her, but she was very underweight since hawks really rely on their their sense of eyesight to find their food. So since she could really only see out of the left eye, she wasn't finding enough food on her own. Was she found in the, in the Illinois area up here? She's actually from Tennessee. Tennessee, okay. Mm -hmm. How, so, any idea what do you think her age is? Well, we got her in 2003 and she was fairly young, okay. but she was an adult. Oh. So she could be anywhere from you know 17 to 20 years old. Okay, and what do you feed Dakota? She really likes rats a lot. Okay. That's her favorite, but she also gets mice, she gets chicken, she gets quail, she gets a variety. Wow, it sounds Sometimes like rabbit. The, wow, it sounds like the uh, first course or second course at one of the finest restaurants in Chicago. <laughs> Boy. Really? So yeah, she gets a pretty good diet here. Um, so like I said, she was found and yeah. that's when they determined that uh, she would not be able to be released and she had to come and live well, at the again, zoo. Well, again, she's got a good deal here. She does, yeah. Like Maggie was saying with Quilbert, you know, she's got free health care. Yeah. She gets free food brought to her every single day. Oh. So what, what the, her health care does for her is that in the wild, she wouldn't live more than 10 years. Okay. And in the zoo, she can live into her late 20s. Now, where does she reside here at the zoo? She is off exhibit. Okay. So oh. she only gets to be seen uh, when we break her out for chats and for okay. programs. How often does she get outside? Do you let her, does she do you let her fly around in a cage? Oh, we do actually let her fly. So I have a really long leash that I can put on her. You can okay. see that she has these anklets on her feet. She wears those all the time, just like oh. your dog wearing a collar. And I have these dresses through her and then the leash. But I can put a really long leash on her and fly her outside. That leash is called a creance. Okay. And I might fly her to another keeper. I can fly her to a perch. And she can get her exercise that way. And I suppose that she enjoys that. She does enjoy that very much. Right. Yep. What do you think, Dakota? Yeah? You want to spring this joint, huh? Right? <laughs> right. She, no, she, she really no. does enjoy it here. No, that's good. That's and she's, good. Well, she's a beautiful animal. Yeah, um, she's been coming out and meeting people for a long time. So, so she's this really is the type of guy we see on top of the, uh, 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 along the interstates? Um, yes. Sitting on top of the... Uh, yes, the, they are the most common hawk in this area. You might also see some Cooper's hawks, but they're smaller and they have multiple bands on their well, tail. Well, we see them all the time when we're driving down to Springfield, and you know, you see them mm -hmm. on 294 too. Oh, yeah. got good reaction. So yeah, they like to sit up on those poles and then they'll look down for those things to eat. And usually when they're flying around, they might only be flying 20 to 40 miles per hour. But when she stoops down to get something, she yeah. can go up to 120 miles per hour. 
So it's pretty fast that they come down, they grab that food with their feet, and then they tear it up with their beak. And they eat every single part of that animal, whatever Down they, the bone, yeah, yeah. bone, fur, feathers, whatever, whatever they can't digest, they spit back up in a pellet. Okay. Well, so she seems a little jumpy today. <laughs> I don't know if I get to it. Um, well, might be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> might be some of the movements or the lights behind her. Right. Well, you know, I get that reaction from women often when I get uh, <laughs> close to them. So. Uh, that's all right. This is great. She's a beautiful animal. She and, is. Uh, uh, this is a wonderful ambassador along with the other ones. So this has been a very enjoyable morning. And uh, considering that most of us have been landlocked and house locked over the past four months, this is a real treat for myself and my staff to come out here too. Hey, we appreciate you coming out. See and these visit. amazing animals. So thank you so much. Thank you for coming. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, kids, for joining us. Stay safe this summer, and we'll see you next year. Bye bye.